Hey everyone, Tony from TN3 Studio. Today we are checking out some of the new features in the second update of V-Ray 5. So V-Ray 5 Update 2 was just released and we got tons of cool features to look into, such as the V-Ray material improvements, new materials in Chaos Cosmos, improvements to V-Ray Vision, and new features in the V-Ray Frame Buffer. And I'll have a link for the V-Ray release notes in the description. In today's video, we're covering two of those new features, which will include the Scatter Tool and the Decal Tool. So to keep it simple, Scatter is a distribution tool and you can use it to scatter objects onto the surface of another object. The idea is that you can assign an object as a host and assign other objects as guests, which you can scatter onto the surface of the host. It's a very similar concept that we've seen in other plugins. So this is my scene, it's a bit of a work in progress, but we're going to use Scatter to distribute some trees and grass into the backyard. And we're going to use Chaos Cosmos to get some 3D assets. The great thing about Cosmos is that it's always expanding and it's a one-stop shop for all your 3D assets. If I go over to 3D models, I can click here and filter what I've already downloaded. A little tip here, it's always good to have varieties. As you can see, I have five different types of trees, two different types of field grass, and a daisy flower. Once you've downloaded all of your models, you can click here to import into your scene. So now we are ready to do some scattering. Let's select our landscape. Head over to the very objects and you're going to see a couple of new icons. And to add scatter, you want to click on this icon here. You can also right click on geometry, select scatter from the list and assign to your selection. This is going to add a V-Ray modifier and make the selection the host. And if you look over at your list, we have a brand new scatter object and let's just rename this to something appropriate. So let's call it grass scatter. And if you look at the setting, these are terms we've seen before. But before we do that, let's also add our 3D assets for scattering. Select your assets and on your scatter settings, click on add guests and you will see all of those objects listed here below. Now, it's also important to note that the only special objects that can be used as scatter guests are proxy mesh. If you use a SketchUp group or component, make sure that that group is present in the scene. If it's deleted, it will disappear from the guest list as well as in the scatter composition. You will also notice a colored box for each asset previewed on the scene. So let's switch over to a much simpler example and go over the settings. First parameter is density. Density controls the amount of objects or guests to be scattered. The higher this value, the more scattered objects you will see on the surface. The seed parameter controls the random seed of the scatter, changing this value will give you different random variations of your scattering composition. Axis filter filters the faces of the host that will be used as scattering. And you have two options, facing up will use all of the surfaces that are facing upwards. And if you switch to all faces, it will scatter objects on all the faces of the object. Next, we got orientation. This controls the position of the objects on the surface. World up means that the objects will be facing upright. And along normals means that the objects are positioned based on the base surface face normals. And here are some examples of what that could look like for different shapes.
next we got collision detection this is a very important setting by checking this box you're telling the objects to not overlap with each other and this can impact the overall number of objects scattered on the surface. Now if you see all of the objects on your guest list, right beside it you will see a probability value. This value controls the probability of that object appearing over the others. Now the higher this value, the more visibility for that object. This is great when you're scattering multiple objects and you want a few to be more visible than the others. Next, we got a couple of settings that will give you a bit more control for previewing your objects. Such settings will include object origin for better placement, preview modes, and preview percentage, which will allow you to control how much of the composition you want to see. Last and certainly not least, we got the scale and rotate settings. By setting a minimum and maximum value, you are randomizing the scale and rotation of your entire composition. And this is a great setting to have when you're trying to avoid repetition over multiple objects. Now if you're a long time VR user, you, you'll be very happy with this feature and it's the perfect tool that lets you be more creative with your work. Now scattering is a workflow that can be a bit time consuming, so take the time, get familiar with the settings and see how creative you can be with your scenes. And after a few trial and errors of my own, these are the final results for my backyard example. Before we move on to the next feature, we want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. You can explore new skills, deepen an existing passion, and get lost in your creativity. If you need an easy to follow viewer guide, then you will appreciate this video for SketchUp course by Tenish Patel. This is a beginner-friendly class that will get you familiar with modeling in SketchUp and rendering with V-Ray. This class covers all the basics of V-Ray material creations so you can understand and master your architecture rendering skills. So if you're interested in this class or any other topics, the first 100 people who use the link in the description will receive a one-month free trial of Skillshare Premium. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning meaning that there are no ads and they are always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. Once again, we want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Next, we got another V-Ray object called Decal. This is a special V-Ray object that provides an easy way to project one material on top of the other. The object is in the form of an adjustable gizmo that controls its size, placement, and projection limits within the viewport. Again, if you want to read more on V-Ray decals, there'll be a link in the description. For our example, I will try to project a logo onto this model. This is a quick mock-up of my logo that I've done in Photoshop. And in my studio setup, this is the model that I'm going to use to project the logo. And as you probably guessed, this tool can be really great for product visualization. To add a V-Ray decal, go to your object toolbar and along one of the new icons, you want to click on this icon here. Similarly, you can also right click on geometry and select decal from the list. Once you're ready, go to the face or object you want to project. Click to set the first point. Second click will set the size and the third click will set the height. This is a very simple and easy object to understand because there's an arrow pointing to the direction of the projection. So let's turn on interactive rendering.
In able to see the effects, you need to load the decal material for the projection. I already have my logo as a V-Ray material and that's what I'm going to import here. Remember that the projection is contained within the gizmo box so you can scale to adjust its size, rotate, stretch it, and as you can see those results will update on your interactive rendering. Mask is going to control the transparency of my logo. As you know, when using a mask, a black color means total transparency and a white color means opaque. So if I use a gradient texture, you will start to see a fading effect on my logo like so. Next setting is Z order which is great if you have more than one decal on the same surface. Think of it as the order in which you will see the decals. D value 1 is going to be your first decal. D value 2 is going to render on top of 1. And Z value 3 will render on top of both. So as an example, I'm going to add a second decal. Scale it so that it wraps around the bottle. Set the decal material to a solid color. Now currently they are both on Z order 1. So if I change the solid color to Z value number 2, it will render on top of the logo. Next couple of settings is to adjust the width, length and height of your gizmo. So this is in case you want to be precise with your projection box. So let's change the material to a different texture. And next we got normal angles. This limits the decal effect based on the angle between the targeted surface and the projection direction. Now the current default value is 89. And if you take a closer look change that value to 60, you can see that there's a bit of a separation on the solid material of that projection. So the lower this value, the larger the separation on the surface. Next setting is fade out. This enables a fade out on that separation angle. So if you check this box, you can see what the effect looks like. And last, you got the fade out angle setting, which specifies the minimum value of the fade out angle. Now depending on the use you have for the V-Ray decal, you can use it for product visualization, add imperfections, surface graphics, pictures, it really all depends on how creative you're trying to be. Both decal and scatter effects are only visible at render time, so it's meant to speed up your workflow and not be too demanding of your computer. And that will be all for this video, be sure to comment down below if there's anything that I've missed. What do you think of V-Ray 5.2? And as always, any topic suggestions, I can follow up on another tutorial. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and follow us on other social media platforms. As always, I'll see you guys next time.